Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, Acts chapter 22, beginning in verse 17 today. Get your Bible, open it up to Acts chapter 22. We'll begin in just a minute. The Scripture Verse by Verse website is found at the Bible versebyverse.com. There you will find four complete series, going on five, going through every verse of the Bible. The New Testament is done in the fifth series, the Old Testament up to Jeremiah. So there's a whole lot there for you, plus the previous four series, everything, and all the coffee breaks. I don't know, probably a thousand coffee breaks. And single books of the Bible, too, that I have done over the years. And extra series, New Testament series that I have done. So it's just, you'll never run out of the word, believe me. At the Bible, verse by verse dot com. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Acts twenty two seventeen and it came to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance. Well, Paul is relating his conversion story and what happened shortly afterwards. And after he was saved, he was in Jerusalem. And while there he was praying, and Christ shut down his senses, tuned him out from everything around him, so that God could talk to Paul. It's very important when we talk to God that we do not have distractions. We see that time and again in Scripture the importance of being quiet before God, quiet when we read his word, quiet when we pray to him. One of the best times for me to pray is when I'm in the car. I never have the radio on, or very seldom do I have the radio on. When I do, it's a sports talk show or something like that, but not very often. I like it. I'd like to have it quiet. When I walk, I like to have it quiet. Spend that time with God, if possible. So, Jesus is preparing Paul by putting him in a trance where everything else was shut out. If there was something going around, on around him, he didn't notice. 18. And I saw him saying unto me, Make haste. And get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. Jesus had told Paul that the Jews in Jerusalem would not believe his story about Christ appearing to him. They would not believe his testimony concerning Jesus being the only Savior. Christ then tells Paul to leave town. But Paul has a different idea. Look at 19. And I said, Lord, they know that I am imprisoned and beat in every synagogue those that believed on thee. In other words, Paul is saying, but God, I don't have to run away from these Jews, Lord, because they're going to be impressed with my extreme and sudden, sudden positive change towards you, Jesus. They'll they'll just, they are so shocked by my 180 and my deep love for you now that that's just going to give me an audience with them and they'll be just fine. Well, it wasn't true, but that's what Paul thought. Many times new Christians are shocked when their old friends are not as interested in Christ as they are. 20. And when the blood of thy martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by and consenting unto his death and kept the raiment of them that slew him. Boy, you know, Paul never forgot how he presided 
over the stoning of the first martyr in the church, Stephen. Paul was forgiven, like every sinner who comes to Christ. But that sin left a mark on his soul. Even forgiven sins can leave a mark on our souls and on our minds. Not one that God sees. They're all washed away as far as he's concerned. But they leave a mark on our soul that we sometimes cannot forget. 21. And he said unto me, Depart, for I will send thee far from here unto the Gentiles. You're not going to talk Jesus out of saying it's okay for you to stay there, Paul. He knows what's going on. Things were going good until Paul mentions right here. Remember now, Paul is talking to a bunch of Jews who were rioting because they wanted to kill him. The Roman soldiers saved him. And now he, remember, he beckoned to the Jews and he asked permission from the Roman guards to speak to the Jews. Well, he'd been talking to them about his conversion story. And evidently, they were listening okay. Maybe they were calming down a little bit, but things seemed to be going pretty good until Paul mentions that Jesus commanded him to take the message to the Gentiles. Well, look at verse 22. And they listened to him until this word, and then lifted up their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. The thought of a Gentile being saved from hell, are you kidding me? Kill him. Kill him, kill him. These arrogant, self-righteous, religious hypocrites who thought that they were better than everyone else are in a rage because Paul taught that Christ wanted the Gentiles to be saved too. Which leads me to say this. In Christ there are no racial or social distinctions because Jesus wants all people to be saved. 23. And as they cried out and cast off their clothes and threw dust into the air, these people were throwing a tantrum because Paul taught that God said that the Jews and the Gentiles are equal and that he loves them both the same. Well, that just caused them to explode with anger. 24. <clears throat> the chief captain commanded him to be brought into the barracks and bade that he should be examined by scourging that he might know for what reason they cried so against him. I'll tell you what, this Roman soldier better watch what he's about to do. The Roman commander, of course, is still in the dark. He has no idea what Paul just said to this Jewish mob because remember, Paul was speaking in Hebrew and they spoke whatever, Latin or I don't know. Now this, so the Roman commander who was listening to him give this speech didn't have a clue as to what Rome or what Paul said to these Jews, and he had no idea what set him off. Well, he figures that Paul is guilty of something, and if need be, he's just going to beat the truth out of Paul. Yeah. Well, look at twenty-five. And as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the centurion that stood by, Is it lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? Yeah, I think Paul is getting sick and tired of being beaten unfairly. So he plays the trump card. He plays the Roman citizenship card to this Roman soldier who is about to have him flogged. 26, and when the centurion heard that, he went and told the chief captain, saying, T. Keed, what thou doest, for this man is a Roman. So this Roman soldier evidently had a whip in his hand, and his arm was cocked, and he was about to let loose on the Apostle Paul, who just also happened to be a Roman citizen, which would have meant the death penalty for this soldier 
because it was illegal to flog a Roman citizen, especially if they haven't been condemned in a court of law. Well, God was very gracious to this centurion. He gave the centurion truth and saved him just in time. Don't dismiss the truth of God's word because it is given for our benefit, whether it sets well with us or not. 27. Then the chief captain came and said unto him, Tell me, art thou a Roman? He said, Yea. The commander was sweating, boy, like I am right now because it's 90 some degrees. The commander was sweating when he asked if Paul was a Roman citizen because as one the one in charge he would have been he would have been killed if Paul would have been beaten. His heart is just a racing right about now. twenty eight and the chief captain answered with a great sum obtained I this freedom and Paul said, But I was free born. Paul says he, he was born a Roman, so he didn't have to buy his citizenship, which is more reason for this commander to treat Paul with dignity. So God is being gracious to Paul by not having him whipped, and God is being gracious to these Roman soldiers if they respond to the truth the way they should and back off. You see, if we don't respond to the truth correctly, then it does us no good. 29. Then immediately they departed from him who should have examined him. And the chief captain also was afraid after he knew that he was a Roman and because he had bound him. Oh, I'm telling you, Roman law was very strict. They, you know, there were some benefits of being a Roman citizen. They were all right in some ways. So Paul says he was, a, he was born a Roman and that put him a really a grade ahead of this Roman soldier. And but putting Paul in chains and binding him was also illegal. And they had done that. They didn't whip him, but they put him in chains and bound him, which was illegal for a Roman citizen, if he was not found guilty in a law or in the court. And if Paul was not a holy man, and had squealed on this commander, the commander would have been in big trouble. 30. On the next day, because he would have known the certainty for what reason he was accused by the Jews, he loosed him from his bands and commanded the chief priest and all the council to appear and Paul brought Paul down and set him before them. Well, instead of trying to beat the truth out of Paul, this Roman commander called the meeting. He called for a meeting of the Jewish high court to get to the bottom of this situation between them and Paul. And we're going to see that extended courtroom drama next time. In the meantime, you can study all of God's word with me at the Scripture Verse by Verse website. And remember, that's found at the Bible, versebyverse.com. Go there, choose, click, and listen. From four complete series, going on five, going through the entire Bible, verse by verse. And if you would like to be a part of Scripture Verse by Verse, you can be very simple. Pray for me. And pray for God's Word. And do it right now, because if you're like me, you'll forget. Uh, I forget stuff so easy, it seems like. So, do it right now. And also, write a note. Stick it on the bathroom mirror. Stick it on the refrigerator door. Stick it on the door going outside your home. Reminding you to pray for Mike and pray for God's word. That makes you a part of this ministry. Bigger than I can say. And don't forget to study God's word with me at the thebibleversebyverse.com. Don't, don't forget that. That's the important thing. 
And then when you take a break from studying, just flip over to the front page at thebibleversebyverse.com, click the donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead, because that also makes you an important part of this ministry. Thank you for studying God's Word with me. Thank you for your partnership in this ministry, helping me to get out the Word of God, something that we know pleases Jesus. Until next time, so long.